We've been told we live in a post-truth society. In 2016, post-truth was named the word of the year by the Oxford Dictionary, riding off the campaigns of the Brexit referendum and the US presidential election. Post-truth is defined as relating to or denoting circumstances in which objective facts are less influential in shaping public opinion than appeals to emotion or personal belief. Within this is the issue of fake news. The sweeping epidemic of news articles that are intentionally and verifiably false that mislead the reader. The £350 million a week we send to the EU, which we will no longer send to the EU, can you guarantee that's going to go to the NHS? No, I can't, and I, and I would never have made that claim. That was one of the mistakes. I... Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Can you no, give I'm us a question? Give you a qu I'm you... not going to give you a can question. You can you stay categorical? You are fake news. Sir, go ahead. Can you... The advent of fake news undermines the indispensable role that a functioning free press plays to a liberal democratic society. We believe a critical thinking citizen is a democratic citizen. Even though we never like it, and even though we don't, have, uh, even though we wish they didn't write it, and even though we disapprove, there still is, there isn't any doubt that we couldn't do the job at all in a free society without a very, very active press. According to the Children's Digital Media Center, by the age of 13, students spend approximately seven hours online outside of the school day. A study by Stanford University found that only 25% of high school students have the media literacy skills that lets them distinguish credible sources from fake ones. John Spencer proposed five C's of critical consumption. Number one, context. Does who wrote the article or when it was written change your perception? Two, credibility. What is the reputation of the news outlet? Do they cite credible sources? Three, construction. Distinguish between the facts and opinions. Four, corroboration. Do other news outlets say similar things? If not, why not? Five, comparison. Look for other opinions. If you look for the bigger picture, the story you're looking at becomes wider. In class, you could teach this via a Diamond 9 activity. Take nine sources of news your students could be exposed to and ask them to rank them in diamond formation from most likely to be credible at the top of the diamond to the least likely at the bottom according to our five C's of critical consumption. Remember, the emphasis in this activity is critical thinking and reason giving, not necessarily that every student comes to create identical diamonds.